we can you know, we continue with, with the series of verses. The next verse is number 18. 325, 18, yeah. Was it, yeah. 18 is the next one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chaksa unmilitam yinatas, my sugar doing maha. Ma um Vishnu Padaya, Vishnu Prastaya Bhutale, Shumakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine. Namaste, Saraswati Deva, Gauramani Pacharine, Nivisa Sunyavari, Pastyatya Deva, Tarine. Vachakalpa, Tarubischa, Sindhu, Deva Cha, Petita, Nam Pavani Bhyo, Vaishnava Bhyo, Namaha Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Kadat Har Sivasari Gaur Bhakti Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare <clears throat> Before I begin, I just need one 30 second break and I'll be right back. <laughs> Jnana Vairagya Yuktena Bhakti Yuktena Chakmana Pari Pasyat Yudasinayam Dasinam Prakritim Cha Hatal Jasam Translation In that position of self realization, it's by practice of knowledge and renunciation and devotional service. One sees everything in the right perspective. He becomes indifferent to material existence. The material influence acts less powerfully upon him or port. As a contamination of the germs of particular disease can influence a weaker person, similarly, the influence of material nature or illusory energy can act on the weaker or conditioned soul, but not on the liberated soul. Self-realization is the position of a liberated state. One understands his constitutional position by knowledge and by ragya, renunciation. Without knowledge, one cannot have realization. The realization that one is the infinitesimal part and parcel of the Supreme Spirit makes him unattached to material life, material conditional life. That is the beginning of devotional service. Hmm. So make that note, that is the beginning of devotional service. Mm -hmm. This cultivation of knowledge and renunciation is the beginning of devotional service. Unless one is liberated from material contamination, one cannot engage himself in devotional service of the Lord. Very important part, point. And this verse is therefore stated, jnana vairagya yuktena. When one is in full knowledge of one's constitutional position and is in the renounced order of life, detached from material attraction, then by pure devotional service, bhakti yuktena, yuktena, he can engage himself as a loving service of the Lord. Paris pasyanti means that he can see everything in its right perspective. Then the influence of material nature becomes almost nil. 
This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Brahma, Bhuta, Prasanna, When one is self-realized, he becomes happy and free from the influence of material nature. And at that time, he is free from lamentation and hankering. The Lord states that that position as mad bhaktim labhyate param. The real state of, of the beginning of devotional service. Simi is confirmed in Narada Pancharatra that when the senses are purified, they can then be engaged in devotional service of the Lord. One who is attached to material contamination cannot be a devotee. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, um, Jnana and Vairagya. Hmm. These are the two principles that make up subsidiary or parallel principles that are both supportive and inclusive in the process of bhakti. In the beginning, they are supportive. As one makes progress, they become inclusive. So what does that mean? That when one begins devotional service, one has to consciously, directly cultivate knowledge and renunciation. In other words, one starts to understand what is my position in devotional service through proper philosophical and transcendental knowledge. And that comes by understanding the process of bhakti. One, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I am his, his eternal servant. And devotional service is the means by which I connect with Krishna and ultimately reach the goal of devotional service, Prema Pumartha Mahan, or loving Krishna by serving Krishna. So that knowledge is preliminary and it's necessary at the early stage of bhakti in order to, as we use a terminology, to get a foothold in devotional service. Without the cultivation of a certain amount of philosophical knowledge, one can one will still be vacillating between material and spiritual, and will mistaken material as spiritual. So one de therefore, it almost says it says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bahunam Gyanamamante Gyanamamam Prapadyante Vasudeva. Sarmiti Sadmahatma Sadur Labahan. When one is in full knowledge, one surrenders to Krishna in devotional service. <laughs> and that knowledge is just what we mentioned. Who am I? What is my relationship with Krishna? What is the process of devotional service? And how to attain the goal of devotional service. Broken down more, uh, what we say, farther or we might say more individually is my relationship my for krishna what is my service to krishna and what is the goal of that service in the vedas this is called uh sambandha abhideya and prayojana and it's mentioned that all vedic knowledge falls into these three categories Outside of that, there is no knowledge. Relationships, activities, and goal of devotional service. So that is necessary, as we mentioned, as a beginning, in order to stay fixed on the path of devotional service. And people who do not make that step initially and part of that step also is to know the difference between matter and spirit and how to free oneself from matter and how to stay engaged in spiritual activities, pure devotional service. As it says here, detaching from material attraction by pure bhakti yogena, 
Dana, he can engage himself as a loving service to the Lord. Uh, one's constitutional position and is in the renounced order of life. That also can mean not necessary sannyas, but it means one is completely detached from all material tendencies. And yuktena or vairagya is the other part of these two principles which are foundational to make advancement in devotional service. If one doesn't cultivate a bit of renunciation <laughs> and that's explained by Srila Sanatana Goswami in his description of what is the process of devotional service to accept things favorable for devotional service and to reject things unfavorable Rupa Goswami's Nirbandas Krishna Sambandha Yukta Vairagya Uchtute um, to know, to use things in devotional service and not to be attached to material things for, for sense gratification. Uh, that is uh, Anukalena, Sankalpa, Patikulena, Vivarjanam. Uh, these two things are very essential and are the principles of renunciation to accept everything favorable for devotional service and to completely reject things that are unfavorable for devotional service and to know the difference between both <laughs> so these two these are regular principles regulated principles that we that one must cultivate through devotional service this is good this will take me away from Krishna. This is not good. So this vairagya, uh, uh, vid, vairagya vidya nija bhakti yoga, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, in glorifying Lord Chaitanya, he made this statement that he is the personification of vairagya and vidya, knowledge and renunciation. Now, while one is engaged in devotional service regularly under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, one does not have to cultivate these principles of knowledge and renunciation separately anymore. They become included within the process of bhakti. When one follows carefully the process of bhakti yoga, that is knowledge and it's also renunciation. So, but that is a stage that comes later on in one's devotional service through understanding the difference between these two things. Mm -hmm. And the more one becomes fit, fixed in devotional service, one is clearly understandable of, of what is favorable and what is not favorable for devotional service. Mm -hmm. And that's every activity in devotional service can be put, or every activity can be put into these two categories, favorable or unfavorable. So in the beginning, renunciation or vayagya means you have to give up certain things. You have to give up association with worldly minded people. You have to give up speaking worldly topics. You have to, um, uh, distance yourself from uh, materialistic sense gratification in all its different forms. <laughs> but when one gets in devotional service and is fixed in devotional service, these become automatic. It's no more cultivating these things separately. So there's a difference between what we might say a neophyte devotee and one who is in the position of Bhakti or the middle of the class devotee. The neophyte devotee has to be always conscious of these two principles, what is knowledge and what is not, and what is renunciation and what is not. And, but when one gets onto the second class platform, then that becomes automatic. 
and no need to cultivate knowledge and renunciation separately and become inclusive in devotional service because devotional service includes all of these principles automatically. So this is an interesting uh, explanation. And as Ralph Prabhupada mentions at the end of the purport, when one stops to lament towards material life, oh, mm, lamentation. Well, I wish I could have had this. I had this. I lost this. I real. I want this. I need this. Uh, or lamentation and hankering. So one becomes happy when they are freed from the influence of of uh, lamentation and hankering. Sometimes we used to say, we still do, that the material energy is made up of these two things, lamentation and hankering. People lament for what they don't have, they hanker for what they, or what they, uh, they lament, yeah, for what they don't have, they hanker for what they want. Or they even lament for what they have, and they hanker to get more of what they want. And these are these two things, hankering, lamentation. It sometimes uses an analogy. It's like a, a football game. The ball goes one way, and from one team kicks the ball one way, and then the other team kicks it back the other way. Lamentation and hankering, that's the material world. So uh, a devotee is uh, fixed in devotional service, doesn't lament about anything material or any loss of anything material, doesn't lament about not gaining anything, is free from hankering about what they need or what they don't need. So these are the two things. And as Prabhupada says, then the real state of, of devotional service begins. But bhaktim lavate param. And then the senses are no longer need purification, they're automatically purified by engaging in devotional service. Uh, like that, uh, what is that? Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam Bhakti Uchtute. <clears throat> that the senses automatically become purified working under the direction of the master of the senses, Rishikesh. Another name for Krishna is called Rishikesh. He is the master of the senses one who engages the senses in the master of the senses, their senses becomes purified and uh, follows the direction of pure devotional service. So here we see the importance of jnana vairagya initially and how it manifests itself automatically as one becomes fixed in the process of devotional service like that. And then one reaches the next stage of devotional service, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, Natsosachina Kangshati, Samasarveshu Bhuteshu Madhbhakti, Labhate Param. One is free from hankering, lamenting, one becomes happy, and one is connected to Krishna in pure devotional service. <laughs> that verse is mentioned in the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, like that. 1854. So this is a little bit more about the science of bhakti. Bhakti is a science in the sense that it, when you apply the ingredients in the right mood, just like if you go into a laboratory and do an experiment, you need the ingredients for the experiment and the laboratory provides the atmosphere for the experiment. So the, the laboratory uh, atmosphere is our, is our mood of devotional service and the activities are hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, engaging in practical service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead under the influence or under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master, which teaches each and every individual what is the activity that they can perform to make progress in devotional service. That's why not every service is meant for everyone. 
although all services are within the category of bhakti, one has the spiritual master engages people according to their nature and by their nature. And when they are fixed in that devotional service, then they make progress in devotional service. So some devotees never really find their nature in devotional service. Sometimes they're very surrendered and they do whatever they are told to do. And that's nice. And they can also make progress in that way also. But when one is engaged according to their nature, then the path, path of back to, God, back to Godhead becomes what we say rapidly increased by working in that mood like that. So we have people have different natures. These natures can be purified into the, under the influence of devotional service. But in the early stages, it's very essential that one works according to their nature so they can become uh, fixed in devotional service. On the higher stages of devotional service, one can perform any activity for the service of the Lord and, and remain fixed in the service. That's not for everyone. <clears throat> That's not for everyone. So uh, therefore, the guidance of the bona fide spiritual master is fundamental to the principles of engagement in devotional service, along with his instructions, which helps us to understand how to execute that particular service. And the knowledge that is needed in order for us to understand our relationship with Krishna. Mm -hmm. And part of that understanding is what is the position of Krishna and what is his relationship with all other departments of, of material and spiritual existence. Uh, to get to know Krishna and how he acts and reacts or doesn't act in different levels or different positions in relationships to his different energies which make up the two energies, devotional service and material existence like that. Okay, so these are some of the principles that are mentioned in this verse. Um, these verses get more and more concentrated on this point. This section of the Srimad Bhagavatam is really focused on the process of pure devotional service. And you'll see that in the upcoming verses, now we're getting into the preliminary stages of pure devotional service. Okay, we'll stop here and see if there's any questions or comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. That was a beautiful verse. Thank you for explaining so nicely. What is, please go ahead with your questions, comments, realizations. Thank you, Mataji. Uh, uh, Hare Krishna, uh, Dhanat Pranam, uh, Guru Maharaj. Um, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, thank you, Maharaj, uh, for the very nice class. Um, so, Maharaj, I have a question about like... Um, uh, nature like uh, engaging in devotional service uh, according to your nature so uh, how should uh, we know our nature because uh, so much we are influenced by maya and um, it's very hard to determine uh, like uh, uh, one's own nature so um, how can we um, um, like uh, uh, know about our own nature Mm -hmm. We get a little indication by understanding ourselves, but that necessarily may somehow be not clear. We may also see our conditioned self as being our nature. Well, I, but this is all called, it's also called Swadharma. Swadharma is your conditioned nature. And that falls into three or four categories. One is physical nature, 
Kshatriya nature, Vaishya nature, or Sudra nature. Now in in Kali Yuga, it's explained Kalo Sudra Sambhavan. That means everyone in this age is born Sudra. So in order to bring out the nature, training is required. So therefore the spiritual master is meant to engage the devotee in training in order to understand clearly their nature and engage that nature in devotional service. And one Swadharma or material nature becomes transformed into the activities of devotional service. And then that, that becomes Daivi, Daivi, Daivi Banarsham or Daivi or pure devotional service. So in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, in the first canto, it mentions that and it's up to the spiritual master to observe the candidate in devotional service and engage them according to their nature. Now, those who work in family life, generally the, the wife and the husband work together to engage in devotional service, and they follow the principles of their particular ashram. So the wife follows the husband in terms of the activities in devotional service, giving support to each other based on the basic principles in devotional service. As that develops, then one starts to understand what, is my, what are my particular tendencies in devotional service? How best can I serve? Now that can also be clarified and should be clarified with um, the spiritual master. Now Srila Prabhupada wanted to set up this training program where the spiritual master will observe train and engage the devotee according to their nature. Hmm. Just like, I'll give you an example of something that is not ideal. If you put people with Kshatriya natures together doing deity worship, they're all gonna have their ideas on how to do it. <laughs> Kshatriyas are more individual, they have their ways of, that they're more like they're more like leaders in the sense is that they like to organize they like to lead they like to be in control that's the kshatriya nature but if they're not advised by the brahminical nature or the brahminical characteristics then engaging in deity worship they will all find it very hard to cooperate with each other so that's why Kshatriyas do good when they work independently of others and can uh, initiate and organize their own devotional service. They're leaders. They have a tendency to be very protective for those they are leading. Uh, and they are uh, independent thinkers in how to execute devotional service. And that if you put too many Kshatriyas or more than few Kshatriyas together on the same service, they'll always be at odds on how to do the service. <laughs> they have a hard time working. So therefore Prabhupada saw that also in our Krishna consciousness movement. And he was able to break that up by sending different devotees who had that nature to different places in the world to start temples and to organize Krishna consciousness in different areas with that. Hmm. So that's an example of how the tendency or the Kshatriya nature is, has a certain inclination about it that works well when that nature is being fulfilled. And when it's not, it can be contrary or find itself being contrary to the execution of devotional service. Hmm. So again, to answer your question, the observation from the spiritual master mm -hmm. is necessary mm -hmm. and fundamental for understanding how best to serve like that. Now, when it comes to Grihasta life, generally the spiritual master instructs the man on, on devotional service and he is meant to guide 
his wife in that way. In that way, both of them come together in devotional service. Now, when you have the situation where the woman is not married or that the husband is not engaged in devotional service, then she requires um, direction from someone in that position of giving direction, such as the spiritual master or the spiritual master's representative, like that. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, if you see, if you have a certain tendency or a certain, mm -hmm. certain talent inclination, mm -hmm. and you are good at that, mm -hmm. that can be engaged in devotional service, and then one will make progress. It's not always the case, but it it may also be the case, it's not always the case, that what one likes to do is one's nature. But in many cases, it is. So therefore, a clarification of that is um, coming needed to come from higher authorities. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much uh, for your detailed answer. Uh, 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 Maharaj, I have one more question. Uh, can I ask, like it's about yesterday's class? Um, mm, uh, yeah, it's somewhat related to this class. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Okay, it, okay, Maharaj. Is it related? Uh, no, Maharaj, it's about like a soul. Um, um, yesterday's class, like uh, you mentioned, like soul uh, leaves the body. Um, like uh, for a pure devotee, um, uh, soul leaves the material body and it enters Vaikuntha. So um, question is like uh, when soul leaves the material body, the for pure devotee, it takes up the spiritual form. So just my question is like how the spiritual form and what like uh, what what uh, how like uh, what is the service they do in the Vaikuntha? Like does like a uh, spiritual form also looks like a material form? Like uh, just well, like, that's mm -hmm. that's mentioned. There are there are those who have the forms of gopis, those who have forms of cowherd boys, those who have forms of Krishna's seniors like his parents. So you have mm -hmm. Sakiras, Vatsayuras, you have Madhuryas, and then you have. Um, um, uh, just dasyaras like that. So you have two realms. You have the Vaikuntha realm and you have the Goloka Vrindavan realm. So some, some devotees by nature are more inclined to Vaikuntha and others by nature are more inclined to uh, Goloka Vrindavan. Now our process is to cultivate the mood of Goloka Vrindavan as given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is teaching uh, Ramya Pasana Upasana Mrzat Vajabhadu, the mood of the, the residents of Vrindavan. And Srila Prabhupada is following that. If you read the verse in the Bhagavad Gita 1865 in the purport Prabhupada emphasis is that we are trying to serve the Lord in this mood as Krishna in Vrindavan, that is our mood. But in engaging in devotional service under the guidance of the spiritual master, one at one level of devotional service will under this, understand what is their mood of bhakti. And that is called uh, one's istadev, well, not, no, I'm sorry, not istadev, but one's uh, constitutional spiritual position. So that's fixed. That's already there. You just have to bring it out by devotional service. So just like uh, to give you the example, in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, there was one devotee named Marari Gupta. Now Lord Chaitanya would tease Marari Gupta because Marari Gupta was a devotee of Ram, and he was always chanting Ram's name. 
And Lord Chaitanya was teasing him and said, well, actually, you know, Ram is very nice, but actually Krishna's pastimes are even more sweeter. So you should be actually become a devotee of Lord Krishna. And so being very obedient to Lord Chaitanya, he made an effort to give up his attachment to Lord Ramachandra. And one night, with great effort, he tried, but he couldn't. And the whole night he was in distress and couldn't sleep. The next morning he came back and admitted he wasn't able to follow that instruction. Lord Chaitanya said, of course you, you can, you are Hanuman. So he was an incarnation of Hanuman uh, who appeared in Lord Chaitanya's pastime. And Lord wanted just to show the glory of Murari Gupta's love for Lord Chaitanya, uh, for Lord Ram. So there are people who are so fixed in their this today or in their in their in their position that they don't change. But generally, we're not clear on who we are, so we follow um, the path given by Lord Chaitanya, which is the path toward Sri Vrindavan Dham. That's what the chanting of the holy name of the Lord, the Hare Krishna mantra is. Goloka Prima Dana Hari Nam Shankirtan Ratin Janmino Kene Upai. So by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we're actually developing the mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham. <laughs> but you'll know at a certain stage, and Prabhupada said the spiritual master will enlighten the practitioner when the practitioner is ready to, to direct them ultimately to their position of the pure devotional service. Mm -hmm. Okay, Maharaj. Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. So we have to just keep, uh, as a neophyte, just keep like hearing and chanting what we are doing. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you also see what is your tendencies as you're as you're engaging in devotional service. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Pranam. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sadam thank you, Mataji. Uh, Sri Devi Mataji, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Hare Krishna. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. <laughs> to Srila Prabhupada. Um, thank you, Guru Maharaj, for this class uh, explaining to us about uh, the process of bhakti and the importance of jnana and vairagya. My question is, right in the beginning, Guru Maharaj, you said that uh, we are vacillating in the beginning. You used the word vacillating. So I was thinking, does that mean that we are um, fickle in uh, practicing, we are in and out like that. Is that what that word means, that we are not fixed? Yeah, yeah, you are, it is called on again, off again. Is a Sanskrit terminology that means one gets enthusiastic in devotional service and they go and then all of a sudden something happens and their enthusiasm is shot and then they become less enthusiastic. Sometimes they even give up devotional service for a little while and just take rest. <laughs> this is actually a terrible being, Guru Maharaj. I was, I mean, uh, to be in and out and to be fluctuating, it's such a. How can we help people to to go all in rather than being in and out? Well, that in and out is going to be there as long as you are still have material desires. But if you if you're fixed on the instructions, then you can stay in. But if you're not fixed on the instructions, then you'll simply be carried away by by the pushings of your material desires. So that's called being fixed based on the principle of knowledge. Although I'm struggling and I don't feel like sometimes I feel like, you know, there's no taste in devotional service. What am I doing? So rather than giving up, 
I just refer back to the understanding. Well, I'm Krishna's part and parcel. This situation that I'm feeling is simply the, uh, the effects of the material energy. I shouldn't identify with it. And I just stay engaged in devotional service, whether I feel good or don't feel good, it doesn't matter. But if we go on feelings, which are influenced by the material energy, then we will be uh, you know, in and out. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we go out, we stay out for too long. And when we come back, it becomes harder. Mm -hmm. The idea is to stay in. Yes. That's Go in and out. It becomes easy when you stay in. Thank you for explaining that, Guru Maharaj. I needed to hear that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Emotions have to be guided by intelligence. Emotions have to be guided by intelligence. If emotions, emotion is devotion, because loving Krishna is an emotion, it's a pure emotion. But if it's not guided by intelligence, then it can take one in the wrong direction. And the intelligence is the instructions of the spiritual master. So we should not be influenced by our emotions, but by, by, by fixed in our intelligence. Yes, that is very important. I can see that now. Thank you so much for explaining that. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj, uh, thank you very much for uh, the, the nice explanation of Jnana and Vairagya and how it links to Bhakti. Maharaj, I have a question about Vairagya renunciation. Um, you mentioned that uh, devotees who are on the path of uh, practicing devotional service under the instruction of a guru um, or seniors, uh, they don't have to separately endeavor for Gyan and Vairagya, but then can you, um, so, so I can understand that, uh, but what is the Vairagya, so, so because is it voluntarily giving up unfavorable things is also considered renunciation, and that is that's, something that we practice. Yeah, that's that yeah. was mentioned, that is Anukulena Sankalpa Pratikula Vivarjanam. To accept things favorable, devotional service, and to reject things that are unfavorable. Yukta Vairagya, Lord Rupa Goswami's Anashakta Se Visayan Yeyuja Upayunjate, Nirbande Krishna Sambande, Yukta Vairagya, which real renunciation is not to give up anything, but to use everything in the service of the Lord. To give up something is called partial renunciation, to use that in the devotional service that is complete or real renunciation. Now, there are things you have to give up preliminary when you start. You have to give up illicit sex, intoxication, gambling, meat eating, <laughs> talking about subject matters that are not related at all to devotional service, um, associating with worldly-minded people. The six principles that are given by Srila Rupa Goswami in Nectar of Instructions. What is that? Yukta uh, Yukta, what is that? Yukta Yukta Vihara, no, let's see. Uh, let me think of that first line. Uh, overeating, over collecting. Uh, what is that? Uh, Atyahara, Prayasya, Prajalpa. Niyamagraha, Jana Sangha, and the last one is, uh, I forgot the last one, there's six. So that's in Nectar and Devotion, verse number two. Ne I'm sorry, Nectar of Instructions, verse number two. These are the six things that are unfavorable for devotional service, and they must be given up. Mm -hmm. Shall I share that, Maharaj, that verse, or just for the... Yeah, you can put 
Yeah. Heating more than necessary, collecting more funds, over endeavor from mundane things that are very difficult to obtain, talking unnecessarily about mundane subject matters, practicing scripture rules and readily only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement, or rejecting the rules and regulations of the scriptures and working independently or whimsically, associating with worldly-minded persons who are not interested in Krishna consciousness, and the last one being greedy for mundane achievement. Now, Srila Bhaktivinoda Kaur, in one book, he uh, carefully analyzes each one of these principles and gives them lengthy uh, explanations on this one and the next verse, which are the six things that are favorable for devotional service. So you understand what the six things that are favorable for devotional service. These purports are quite long. Don't try to read them right now. <laughs> but Bhakti Vinodha Kaur has one in the next verse is, yeah, you can go to the next verse. Utsaha nishcaya daryat tat tat vibhartanam sangatayaga sadho vritti sadbir bhakti upanishati. There are six principles favorable enthusiasm, confidence, patience, and hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, abandoning the association of non devotees mentioned again, and following in the footsteps of the previous charya sadho. Sarubritti. <laughs> so, yeah, you have to, these six are favorable and they, each of them require explanations. And therefore this, again, this purport is super long. <laughs> and uh, the next, uh, in Bhakti Vinoda, where if you can get the book, it's worth reading and studying. It's called uh, Bhakti Aloka by Srila Bhakti Vinoda, Kaur. He, it's a book, so it's quite lengthy. He takes these 12 principles, six favorable, six unfavorable, and breaks them down into finer and finer principles of each one of them. So, uh, uh, so this, these two verses are fundamental to understanding where to, to what to avoid and what to apply our attention on. <clears throat> so I think, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, this is a uh, good explanation because some things we have to endeavor for renunciation of non devotees that we have. To yeah, like I said in the beginning, it becomes just like we give you certain these, things which would come autumn and now a taste of material go away. Yeah, so. just give you, I'll give you a very clear example. When you first start devotional service, you have to endeavor to engage your mind and senses in the service of the Lord. So there has to be some effort to engage your mind and senses. When you become fixed in devotional service, then the mind and the senses are automatically engaged and there's no separate endeavor. As long as you stay engaged in devotional service, your mind and senses are controlled. Before then, to get a foothold in devotional service, you have to make an effort to control the mind and senses. Is that thank you? Help? Maharaj, this is clear. Thank you. Yeah. Devotional yes, service yes. Is, is, is completely different than material activities. Mm -hmm. Although we use activity, worldly activities, as a means to engage in devotional service, but they're not worldly. These activities are part of the activities of the human beings. And therefore, when they're in, when they're directed towards Krishna, they elevate one. When they're directed towards oneself or one's extensions of the body, they degrade oneself.
just like household life can be elevating or can be debilitating, or it can take you away from Krishna or it can take you towards Krishna. And then we have what is called Grihamedi and Grihasta. Grihasta means spiritual, Grihamedi means material. Both are householders. Thank you, Maharaj. This is this is very nice. Thank you. <clears throat> Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All the way to Srila Prabhupada. Um, thank you so much for the nice class and nice discussion, Guru Maharaj. Um, Guru Maharaj, I have a question regarding service. Um, so when um, at the neophyte stage or uh, when I when we can find out what is our Swadharma and uh, uh, doing a particular service or interested in some services, um, that is going fine. But suppose uh, in our congregation or in our uh, local congregation, suppose the need is different, like in some other areas, the services should be done or the devotees are needed at that time. Uh, so even though uh, we are not that much inclined towards that particular service, uh, uh, is it recommended to take up that service, Guru Maharaj? It can be. If it's helpful to pushing on Krishna consciousness accordingly. But, you know, one will always feel inclined towards one's nature, but one can also do other services just as a, as a duty. Yeah. yeah, you can do any service, but you always have your nature there which pushes you towards wanting to do that service, which is in, which complements your nature. But on the highest platform, then nature amalgamates itself with, uh, with, with Krishna. In other words, one can do any service. Just like you had the example with, um, um, hmm, let's see. Dronacharya. Now, Dronacharya was a Brahmana, but he took up fighting because it was necessary. He became a Kshatriya. His son also, Asvatama, was a Brahmana, and he also took up fighting. But you can see what happened with Asvatama. Asvatama, although he was a Brahmana and he was acting as a Kshatriya, he even made a mess as acting at a Kshatriya, he killed the six sleeping sons of Draupadi, which no Kshatriya should even consider to do. He acted wrongly, both as a Brahmana and as a Kshatriya. But he was taking up an, ac an occupation or a service that was different than his nature. So we sometimes we say this is called emergency. Due to circumstances, one can engage in another service, which is different than one's nature, because the need is there. But in the long term, one cannot always stay in emergency services. One will naturally want to engage according to their nature. Yes, good, Maharaj. Yeah, that's true even if their uh, interest is in somewhere and if you are engaging um, in some other service, um, then definitely it will be like a temporary thing only. You may not right. Yeah, like that. But it's, it's needed. Mm. And it's devotional service also. Yes, Kamar. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Hi, is there anyone else who have a question or comment for Maharaj? Um, may I just have a quick question, uh, Brinda? Yeah, yes. yes. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I'm still about this vacillation business. Is it true that it takes many lifetimes to come to the stage of Nishtha 
even after being initiated or we can become fixed in our devotional service in one lifetime itself. Oh, yeah, why not? Mm. Nishti is only, it's still in, a, still in the category of sadhana bhakti. It's, it's not, it's in vaiti bhakti yet, still in vaiti bhakti. It's not raganuga bhakti yet. Raganuga bhakti makes up sadhana bhakti. Vaiti bhakti means rules and regulations. And raganuga bhakti is spontaneous. Both are in sadhana bhakti. Uh, they're not on Bhava Bhakti. Bhava Bhakti starts with uh, a Shakti. So it's, yeah. Yeah, why not? There are devotees are fixed in devotional service now who began with Krishna consciousness in this life. Yeah, why not? If you follow the process, and, and Nishta can be attained uh, even though all the Anarthas are not gone. Bhakti Vinoda course says one can reach the stage of niche, nishta uh, when 75% of the inertas are removed. That means those last 25% needs to be worked on as one stays fixed in devotional service. In other words, fixed in devotional service means not deviated by anything material. It's not like, oh, I'm going on in devotional service and uh, I need a break. I need to go to the movies and, uh, you know, watch something that I like. You know, I'll read, I'll hear about the life of Gandhi. It just came out in the, in the movie theaters. You know, Gandhi, he's Indian, so it must be good if it's Indian. <laughs> you know, so, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, so that's, I mean, he's, that person's not on Nishta yet. <laughs> So you stay fixed in your devotional service. Stay fixed in giving your devotion to Krishna. That's another part of the same stage, Nishta. That I'm always trying to serve Krishna in order to please Krishna. And that's also part of the platform of Nishta. Even if it's not steady, at least the intention should be there. Even if it doesn't come up consciously and one doesn't execute it, but at least one is trying to reach that steadiness. That's also part of Nishta stage. Giving, regularly giving bhakti. Okay. Hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, is there anyone else who has any question? Uh, it's 12 o'clock, Maharaj. Do you, can we continue or is it time? Um, yeah, well, uh, in other words, the hour is up. Okay. It's 12 o'clock for you. It's six o'clock for me. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Six uh, o'clock PM, not AM. <laughs> six PM there. Yes. Maharaj, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we're, we're at the end. So okay. we can stop here and we'll continue with the next verse. Verse number uh, today we did 18, right? So yes. tomorrow we'll do, we'll do 19. Okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Tomorrow is Thursday. Oh, and tomorrow is Thursday. And uh, if you give me a minute, I'll, yeah, okay. Yeah, there, Lavanya has put it up. Tomorrow's verse is 1, 6, 29, and 30. Bhagavatam, 1, 6, 29. And the class time is at... Um, 12 o'clock p.m. UK time, which is noon, which is what you where you are now sitting at that time. <laughs> and so tomorrow is 12 o'clock noon UK time.
class is there. Okay. So that's only on Thursdays we we deviate or we we do a different time like that. Yes, yes. So okay. What was that verse one, six, nineteen, and twenty again? Twenty-nine uh, and thirty. One, one six, twenty-nine and thirty. Okay, tomorrow's class. Okay, you can read up on it ahead of time. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Kija. Yeah. Jai. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for your time and association. Thank you. Hare Krishna.